compared to the blue area of the moon. An area that, for some reason, you can breathe without a spacesuit. Nearly kills everyone around her just by yelling stop, while Tony Stark builds a magical transformer to attack the Phoenix. There you go, Marvel's out of ideas. There's only one scene with the gun, no one actually gets shot. Rebooted into a more uh, grimy character with the new 52. I'm Eric. I'm Dan. Welcome to Comic Pal. Here we are doing another another set. Mm -hmm. um, I went with uh, Batman number seventeen uh, this week, and I picked uh, Hellboy and Hell Three. Um, so, um, if you guys have seen the the previous video that we did where we went over our, our list, you saw all the choices that we had. Yep. Um, I the biggest reason why I picked um, Batman um, this this time around is that I feel like. It was it was a very classic a Joker story, good ending to um, to Scott Snyder's second arc, and um, Greg Capullo did some amazing work on the art. Um, in this issue, uh, you know Batman has finally got um, um, Joker's finally got Batman and the entire Bat family all you know, captured, and um, I think that there are two two things that really stand out for me uh, in this issue, and that's. Uh, first of all, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull up here so I can reference it exactly, uh, and that is when Joker is talking to uh, talking to Batman, and he's trying to um, trying to get from Batman why he won't kill him, you know, and he he uh, he basically says, uh, you know, first of all. He says he says that he couldn't do it because of the slippery slope, and I thought that was hilarious. Um, because basically, what he's doing, you know, what Scott Snyder's doing here is he's he's kind of writing a love letter to us, in that he's like, "Here's everything that you guys always mention online. This is why Batman is who he is." And especially when he says, "I love that one, right?" Because because I'd win. You you know, if if I kill if I kill him, then Joker wins. And he says, "No, I win by living. This is how I win, Bats, by living. I keep on keeping on, you know." And it's it's kind of a really, you know, great example of how these excuses, they're, they're important because it's what keep Batman from being a, an anti-hero, um, but they're also kind of ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, then, and then the other thing that I loved was that um, Snyder just goes and makes this a, a uh, perfect, classic um, ending to a Joker story. Could have been Silver Age, um, you know, and just where he's... he's Put a little bit of of, uh, of a radioactive element into everybody, and it does nothing. The entire point is just so that he knows he knows that Batman will look this up because he knows who how Batman is, and the symbol is ha. So you just end up with it, you know everything's a joke to him, even to the point of putting something radioactive inside of people, and and it's corny and it's wonderful and it's exactly what Joker would do, you know. Yeah, it's real. It's real, <laughs> and I, and I like the way that that Capullo designed that those last. Uh those last few panels where it's just like ha 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 right, you know, right, like, right. yeah it's good so so what do you think being you know not a, not a big huge bat, bat person yourself i'm not i'm not and, and at first i thought it was kind of like i didn't i didn't get why it was supposed to be so good for a little bit because i was like man this is really cheesy blah blah, blah. just kind of going for like a gross out kind of thing but um and i'm sure that this is probably why he cut off his face well somebody else made joker cut off his face but you know th this whole face thing and the, and cutting off everybody's faces and the uh, the idea of not caring who Bruce is or who Batman really is. Um, you have this sort of recurring mask sort of symbol, and uh, and Joker even tries to to even say like what's under what's under the face even means nothing because he has rejected his own actual identity and he he has a very visceral reaction to, to hearing anything about it. And so, like, you know, I, I thought it was a really <laughs> striking image to see, like, all everybody's face cut off, but really their their face, like, with the bat mask or whatever, like, kind of thing, like, yeah. all of that, you know, cut off. Um, it was a really sort of uh, in-your-face symbol, and it was, it was very interesting. Like, just everybody was exposed, and, and everybody at the end of the issue feels like, like, a nerve, like an exposed nerve, has been touched because none of them want to actually deal with, you know. Batman's like, yeah, everybody's coming over, and everybody's like, no, mm, yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, I thought I thought um, classic um, Joker, um, where where you know, 
because as I'm reading this, I'm you know this is the and we've talked about this before. I don't remember if we've done it in a pow or if we've just done it you know uh, back and forth with each other. But but when you're reading comics, you've got this duality, right? You you're you're absorbed in the story. You're reading the story, but you all and this goes with anything movies or anything. But you also know you're reading fiction, and so in my head, I'm reading this. I'm saying, okay, I know Joker hasn't really cut off their faces, right? Because if Joker's cut off their faces, like. How is this going to be retconned, or how they're going to fix it, and all this stuff? And then, and then you know, Joker's actually played a huge joke on them by just numbing their faces, you know, and and then just bandaging them up, so they think their faces. Have been, so they don't even know themselves. It's not even like Batman's the only one who thinks they all think their faces have been cut off, you know. Yeah. And and um, just a really classic thing where they basically said, look, not only does Joker not want to know who Batman is. He doesn't want to know who he is, you know, and that's something that um, I think Grant Morrison brought it to the fore as a way to explain all the retcons. But basically, the 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 most up to date thing about Joker is that his psychosis is that he's constantly reinventing himself. He doesn't care who he is or he was, or and that's why he has a million backstories and all that stuff. He just wants to be an agent of chaos, and he wants to you know to be with Batman and. and and um, you know, just oppose him in, at every turn and, and all that. Um, so, so overall, it was, it was good, great art. Um, yeah, there's there's the other sort of art uh, recurring art theme throughout the whole book was this uh, this I guess I mean you don't put a fly anywhere unless you're talking about decay. Yeah, and uh, you know, and, and of course there was also it also opened with like the the image these images of these, uh, you know, the, the skeleton of a bat and all yeah. that stuff. It's all, it's all, it's all real interesting. Um, and I, and I like the Capullo, uh, the Capullo or Capullo. Is he Italian? Is he Spanish? Capullo. I don't know. It doesn't matter. But, but he, 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 he had these flies sort of on the, on the sides of tons of panels, like throughout yeah. the whole thing. Like, it's just yeah. like, hey, there's a fly there. Hey, there's a fly there. And it's yeah. like, uh, real sharp art, real gross art, um, yeah, definitely. You know, at, at, at least at the at the topmost level, you know, without going to any metaphors or anything, you know, Joker's face has been off his face for a year, so his face is decaying. So if you see, there's a lot of flies like crawling on his face and stuff like that. But but there's definitely the possibility that there's at least two or three other layers with the way that they usually write together. Yep. All right, and we'll be back in a minute for Dan's book. All right, Dan's got Help and Hell, number three. Number three. Um, so, Hellboy's dead. He died uh, a while ago, actually. I, I haven't been reading, keeping up with, like, the BPRD and Hellboy book and all that. Like, I, I came onto it about last year. So I don't know the specifics behind it. I think he died when the Frog Army invaded or something. I don't know. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But we haven't seen, or, you know, Mike McNola hasn't done anything with Hellboy proper in years. Um and so this is sort of his his return to form. You know, I, I don't know if he also was behind the art in the original Hellboy books as well, but this is definitely back to, like, Mike McNola writing, Mike McNola drawing, or, you know, art, and then Dave Stewart's on, on uh, colors. And uh, both of those are really the reason why I picked this book. You have, like, a lot of... Um, Magnola's style is, is is sparse. It's not it's not the most detailed art, and it's it's not the most uh, you know like all the lines aren't aren't real like sharp and all that. You know, there's there's abstraction and there's a lot of um, especially I don't know if this is the style that all Hellboy books are, but for Hellboy in Hell, you have a lot of it reminds me a lot of gargoyles. You know, like like just this sort of rocky, stony look, and then you have uh, Stewart uh, Stewart's colors. Um, there's not a lot of there's not a whole lot of variety. What what he's doing is mostly like works in contrast. Like you know, you have this Leviathan here, and I'm sure it'll be on the screen too, where you have sort of the orange mouth contrasting with everything else that's sort of gray and, and light blue and all that. You know, dark reds and and just a lot of a lot of neatness in the art. And and that's really more what I was into with this book. Uh, I thought that you know, because this is just a battle book. You know, it's it's Hellboy versus Brothers, uh, whereas like last issue was more of a uh, Christmas Carol type thing. You know, and this one, this one is kind of, we're still in the dark about what exactly is going on with Hellboy in Hell, because um, this is the first we've even started to address the fact that he's, like, what happened to him after he died, so. Uh, so, I think, I think it's, I really think that it's really neat and really um, bold, the way that, that Mike does his inks, 
Um, I mean, he's he's his inks are so um, so thick that sometimes sometimes it obliterates um, detail. detail. Like and and also a really bold choice that for a lot of his um, panels, the characters you see their their outline, but you don't even see their face, their eyes, their nose, their mouth, anything like that. Yeah, something uh, like that. Yeah, yeah. But then, but that's a really good panel to point out because the the guy, the other guy, you do see his face, and and that's you know bringing attention to it and so on. Um, the only the only bad thing about his style, um, combined with the fact that I've never read this, is I kept getting a lot of the characters confused. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Hellboy's the guy who has his horns cut. Off. Yeah, yeah. Because he he grinds them down because he Hellboy wants to be human. Right, right. And they address that a bit in, in this issue, but uh, just during some of the fights, I lost track of who was who and what was going on and all that stuff. Um, really, Deus has Mac- Machina, uh, uh, yeah, kind of ending to the fight. Um, but the fight wasn't really the point because I guess he killed his dad or something. I'm not really sure. No, his father is the guy who's in the is in the ice. Okay, right here. So, uh, but or Satan, he killed Satan. Satan. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but he didn't know he killed Satan or something. So, so really, the point of the ending is not so much the fight. It's that, like, oh, this fight was going up, but that's not even the important thing. You've and, and then you see him just adrift amongst these, you know, glaciers or whatever. So yeah, and yeah, I think the the, the idea was meant to, to illustrate the struggle that like Hellboy struggle in in rejecting his uh, his destiny to become the ruler of Hell uh, by rejecting the people who were trying to take it from him because of his I don't know Hell Hand or whatever, yeah. whatever the hell it's called. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, so he's rejecting his own family and rejecting his own heritage because you know. Pandemonium and hell and all that, like that's that's his stomping grounds. But he doesn't want anything to do with that. He wants to, you know, he's always been more into the human thing. So, okay, cool. All right, right after the break, the break, we'll be back for uh, for the battle. All right, it's battle time. So, um, I think I think that on on the art, um. You know, it's it's so so interesting to compare because because um, Hellboy is so abstract. Not well, is abstract the right word? It's it's minimal. It's so minimalist. Yes. Yes. And then uh, Batman is so full of detail. There's right. Well, I mean, aside from from Batwoman, you know, like what Hellboy has is this level of of artistry that isn't really tolerated in the big two. Right. You right. Know, right. Right. Um, which is fine, uh, because they're not necessarily trying to tell these these abstract of two stories, you know. But that's not necessarily true either, because you saw with Snyder Capullo, yeah. like in uh, in the third one that we read or whatever, like where the book's flipping and everything, right. or even in this one, like just to say that that you're not doing something like artsy right. doesn't necessarily mean that you can't be arty. <clears throat> yeah, well, well, what I think what Capullo does the best is while staying within the the constraints of the medium. You know his his gutters aren't usually anything special or anything like that. Um, he does a lot of uh, framing and angles. You know, there's a couple panels where you're looking at Batman through um, the handle that Joker's going to use to lift up the the cover on the plate, uh, and you see Batman has a really worried expression. You know, he does a lot of um, uh, when uh, Joker strikes at him with an axe, you see Batman's reflection within the axe. You know, so he tends to frame the action in really unique ways um but but his layouts are more um yeah they're, traditional they're, they're more they're more conventional more traditional but they're also i don't know he, he's no slouch right like right. like there is there is something beyond a real like straightforward approach right. here and that's that's why i've always always appreciated every one of these these batman books that i've read uh that you put forth you know in front of me so um it's it's a uh, definitely uh, also interesting to compare them story wise. Um, Hellboy and Hell's in the middle of a story arc. Um, Batman is ending a story arc. Um, I think I think uh, the the good thing about the way that uh, Snyder's written this issue is that um, I don't even think you need to know what was going on to, yeah. to, to enjoy that issue. Yes, yeah. I don't. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I think that. That he wrote it in such a way that if you if you've been reading, you you really know what he's been doing to Batman and the family and all that stuff. So you kind of uh, have a little built up hatred, you know, extra hatred for Joker. Yeah. But I think the issue stands alone really well, which makes it a 
part of what made it such a good POW candidate. Yeah. Whereas, like, for example, Manhattan Projects kind of doesn't make sense on its own. It really mm-hmm. needs the last two issues. Um, um, BPRD, I mean, um, Hellboy, Hellboy and Hell also seems to kind of stand on its own because they do a lot of recapping and stuff like that here. And I, I do wish that we had been doing this around when Hellboy and Hell 2 came out because I think that that's a more impressive issue. But, um, you know, because it, it melds a little bit better storytelling with the Mignola art that, that is so great here. But, you know, I, I, I feel like with the picks that I make for, for here, I could have gone with Fatal too. Like, that would that would have had pretty good art as well. But, um... I like to pick a lot of the time something that is just artistically sound because I feel like writers get a lot of attention. But, you know, I'm not going to sit here and say, like, Hellboy in Hell number three is better than Batman 17 because it's not. Yeah. Um, Batman 17 has... has um, I'm, I'm impressed by good art. I'm impressed by good art and excellent writing. And there's a lot of excellent writing in, uh, you know, paired with, uh, with Capullo's art in Batman 17. So... Cool. I'll, I'll I'll take another win. That's for sure, and uh, we'll see we'll see what you bring next time around. Um, again, we we try to do these about every other week. Um, sometimes stuff gets in the way. Yep. Um, last last week it was a uh, Lunar New Year um, that that had had us uh, unavailable. But uh, feel free to leave comments um, either on the Pow website or on YouTube or anywhere you happen to see this. We love we love getting feedback. Yeah, yeah, and tell us uh, tell us. No, I don't have anything. <laughs> All right, bye.